The key here is to get clear on who you want to be and spend each day making it happen for you. Don't worry. We'll work on this together as a team. We'll have a meeting about this and uh, we'll see what we can do about it tomorrow, okay? The important thing is that you communicated that properly to me. All right, see you soon. Bye. Leadership is something that can't be bought, but it can be earned. People can say that, you know, you bought this company and such, so now you're a leader. In this episode, I'm going to talk about five core traits that leaders have and how you can acquire them too. So stick with me until the end because this is just five simple core traits and I want you to be able to pick up these in order for you to become a leader yourself. You ready? Let's go. There's a saying that leaders are made, they are not born. When I was a kid, I thought that leaders were born. You know, when you're a prince, you're a son of a king, automatically you're a leader. You're not. Even that prince, as a kid, he is trained to someday become a king. Although he already knows that he's going to take the throne eventually. But if he is not trained properly, then he will never become a leader that's respected. Leaders are made, they're never born. Here's what you can do to become one as well. And if you do want to become a leader, let me know in the comment section down below. The number one core trait that leaders have is that they make other people better or they make people around them better. Let me explain. You get this part right and right away, you've already won half the battle as a leader. Leaders see the world through the lens of just being able to help others. A leader is someone that helps others before they even help themselves. They don't need to help themselves right away because they already know what they're capable of. And that's why they're able to help others. Does it make sense? You help people around you and they become drawn to you because there's now a dependency towards you to make the decisions and be helpful in terms of their growth. Now when you're thrust in the position of leadership, you're in the position to actually improve or have betterment on another person's quality of life. I remember one time, the first time I was promoted from an employee to a supervisor and I was given the keys to a team of 60 agents and I felt really afraid and that time my supervisor helped me a lot in terms of taking care of my own team as well and eventually I got the hang of it it took a while I mean skill can also be learned but leadership is something that you can learn as well but the most important part here is that it actually feels good to have someone fighting in your corner that's the best thing that someone that you lead feels you feel special about it if you're following someone so make people feel this way by making them better because the better they are the better you will look because you're leading a bunch of people who are feeling good about themselves so that's number one make other people better number two do the right thing it's so simple yet i want to explain to you this part it's a nice afternoon and you're out you walk into a coffee shop and then you buy coffee and you're in a rush and then the barista thinks that you've paid already and he hands you your drink do you tell them or do you leave right away and thinking that you got away with it what do you think? Being a great leader is acting with integrity. It doesn't mean that someone doesn't know about it. It doesn't mean that it's okay and you can get away with it. Do the right thing even when no one is looking. You've heard that before, right? And that's one thing a lot of us struggle to do is that doing the right thing even if someone is not looking. There's always someone watching. Big Brother is up there. So that's number two. Do the right thing. Number three, it's one word only. It's called authenticity. Being authentic. People who change how they are based on how they feel are very difficult to predict. And a person who is difficult to predict is difficult to follow. Does that make sense? A leader knows this and he remains authentic no matter what situation there is. He doesn't change his tone of voice because he is authentic to what he believes in. The key here is to get clear on who you want to be and spend each day making it happen for you. Authenticity, it requires consistency. You can't be authentic today and tomorrow you're not. Next thing, you're authentic. Next day, you're not. It requires consistency on your part. That's number three. Be authentic or authenticity. And by the way, if you're enjoying this episode right now, subscribe to the channel will be lovable. Number four, standing up for others. Here's a situation for you. You're in another town, another place, and you see someone who's being mean to someone else. For example, a guy who's being berated by someone else, and you feel that he's being inferior, and you know he's done nothing wrong, but this other person berates that person so much that he's like throwing to the curb or something like that. The question here is, would you walk by and just forget about it, or do you help him by 
confronting the other person. Let me know. What do you think? Leaders stand up for people even if it doesn't concern them. They stand up because they know it's the right thing to do. It's similar to the other portion that I explained earlier. Yes, it is uncomfortable, but your heart could start racing and your hands could become sweaty and you become fearful, but you are now what we call outside of your comfort zone. Standing up when it's tough is precisely what makes you become a leader. If you know what you believe in and when you stand up for and you don't talk about it and you don't stand against what you believe in, then what kind of person are you? If you believe in something and then you don't fight for it, what happens then? What happens is that in the long term, you regret that part when you didn't do anything. You know that story, the first Spider-Man wherein Spider-Man was paid as a wrestler, but he was just paid a small amount by the guy. And then the guy who paid him little was robbed. And he just let the robber get away. Just because he felt bad for that person that didn't pay him right and then someone stole from him, he just let the person go. Did he regret it? Absolutely. Because that guy that went past was the person supposedly that killed his Uncle Ben. I remember the best quote ever from that movie was, with great power comes great responsibility. It's a great leadership quote I'll never forget. That's number four stand up for others. Number five, and this is something a lot of us struggle a lot. Admit it or not, people have favoritism at some point. And this is about treating everyone the same. It's like this. You have five kids, but there's one child that you have that you favor the most or you favor the least. So the best judge of character is how someone treats people regardless of their status or their position. But most people don't actually do this. And that's the thing. They treat the wealthy with more respect compared to the waiters. And I have a problem with that because if you can't treat the waiter or the janitor with the same respect that you give a CEO, then it's hard for me to be friends with you. If you don't treat a person who you think is levels below of you in terms of how they live or their income or their wage or their position, regardless, and you, you can't give them the same respect as you give someone who you think is levels above you, then we can't be friends. I'm sorry. When you treat everyone equally, you make people feel very special. You'll never forget that feeling that they made you feel. If a person made you feel bad, you always remember the emotion that you felt when they left you feeling like that or the other way around. And this skill will make you a person that will be very easy to follow. That's why a lot of people are beloved by so many people, even if they haven't met them. It's because of that skill. They treat everyone the same. And that's with kindness. Regardless of what color, of what nationality, age, or you know, position they have in life. That's number five. Leaders treat everyone the same. And with that, it's now time for our question of the day. What core leadership trait do you want to learn? Let me know. That's all I have for you today. If you think you found value in today's episode, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I'll see you again on the next episode. Peace.